Hello, Michael. Hello, David. Blue Blood and Mutiny. I love the title. What, why did you choose the book? <laughs> and the subtitle is The Fight for the Soul of Morgan Stanley. Well, I mean, who could resist a book about Wall Street right now? Now, this book's about uh, Morgan Stanley, which uh, has been the most successful of the high-flying Wall Street firms traditionally. But in 2007, they lost $9.8 billion on trading asset-backed commercial paper. And it's, it's all part of this subprime uh, mortgage crisis. Well, they're not alone in that. Uh, Citibank, in the same year, uh, they lost $9.83 billion and fired the CEO. Merrill Lynch lost $8.6 billion and fired their CEO. But back to Morgan Stanley, this is about the power struggle that culminated in 2005, which brought John Mack back to the firm to become CEO. It was about uh, a, a boardroom battle to depose the former CEO. CEO, a fellow named uh, Philip Purcell. Uh, so Mac was only two years in the saddle, of course, and he had a bad year in 2007. But the power struggle that put him there, the battle for the soul of Morgan Stanley, is what the book's about. But the book is about the struggle in 2005 and not so much what's going on currently, right? Uh, correct, correct. Uh, this is the, uh, the inside story of that uh, coup d'etat. Uh, and it was, it was all started by eight former executives of Morgan Stanley, including an ex-president and an ex-chairman. Uh, the media uh, quickly called them the eight grumpy old men. In the years in which Philip Purcell had been CEO, Morgan Stanley stock tanked about 50%. So the grumpy old men collectively uh, certainly lost, uh, you know, several hundred million dollars. And, and that's serious dough even on Wall Street. But they said they were doing it on principle. They were saying that Purcell was secretive. They didn't like the, the way he was uh, handling the corporate culture of the old firm. They said he wasn't living up to the standards and the reputation of J. Pierpont Morgan, who started it all a hundred years ago. So they were doing this on the principle, but I'm sure the few hundred million dollars they lost had something to do with it as well. Yeah, I think the money had something to do with it. I mean, money is how you keep score in these, in these uh, big companies anyway. But I really do think the fight was about corporate culture, about openness. You know, high finance is still a relationship business, and the relationships at Morgan Stanley were terrible. There were lots of firings, lots of resi resignations, lots of big deals uh, that, that weren't getting made. Now, when you read the book, you realize the author, Patricia Beard, her source was obviously the eight grumpy old men. Uh, Purcell d didn't, I don't think he was even, would sit for an interview for the book. So you are getting uh, that point of view. But, uh, you know, it, it's definitely a, a, a good read. So even though we don't hear Purcell's side and it's, it's rather one-sided, it, it's worth reading. It's slightly one-sided, but uh, the author, she's a very experienced business writer, and she does her best to cover both sides of the story, and it's, it, it's well documented. You know, but I like it because, well, a lot of people think these Wall Street firms, they don't really, really know what they do. Morgan Stanley has revenues of $85 billion, so they're doing more than just pushing paper. This book really gets you past the press releases and, and into the boardroom. It, it gives you great insight into what these firms on Wall Street are really up to. So this, this coup d'etat, as you refer to it, uh, puts mm -hmm. in uh, removes Purcell, puts in Mackin, but he's not doing too well, as you mentioned earlier. Well, he started off all right. His first couple of years were pretty good. In 2006, on top of his considerable salary, he had $40 million in uh, bonuses. But, of course, in 2007, when they lost nine-point-something billion, he decided to forego uh, bonuses uh, for that year. So what's the verdict, Michael? Thumbs up or thumbs down? Uh, two up, David, two up. You know, the feds are now launching criminal investigations into firms like Morgan Stanley and the others uh, to find out, you know, what they really knew about the risks of these, uh, you know, these synthetic instruments they'd created, the asset-backed commercial paper, or collateralized debt obligations, whatever you want to call them. Uh, having read this book, you know, you really get a, an understanding of how Wall Street could create uh, instruments like this. The other thing is, I mean, it, it's just, it reads like a drama. It reads like a movie. I picked this book up on a Saturday morning. It's almost 400 pages, and I finished the thing by Sunday afternoon. Sounds good. Michael, as always, thanks for your thoughts. Pleasure, David. Talk to you soon.